Welcome back, everyone, to the 0K 29, December 2019 1v1 tournament. I'm your host, Dominic, and we have the Upper Bracket Finals! Or semifinals, as Challenge insists on calling them, but yeah, Upper Bracket Finals, Winners Finals, whatever. We are going to be on Titan Duel with Steel Blue fighting against Ultra Godzilla to see who advances to the Grand Finals and who has to fight another match with whoever goes to the lower bracket to figure out who is going to actually win the tournament. So yeah, this is basically a fight for guaranteed second place. And Steel Blue and Ultra Godzilla are going to be doing it on Titan Duel, a map which is a fairly popular map, fairly old map. It's I, I think it's a pretty good map, but it's also a map that has been played to death. So these players are going to be very familiar with the map. Ultra Godzilla going for rovers right off the bat too. No surprises there. Steel Blue probably also going to go for rovers. It is a safe choice on this map, and neither of these players I think are particularly. Well, still the thing is, they might go cloaky. I feel like there's no guarantee they're going to go for for rovers, especially with the cloaky buffs. But I think tournaments being what they are, I would expect rovers. As mentioned before, rovers got a rove. And we have a... Uh, nothing? Steel blue, you, you got a factory? Oh, yeah, yeah rovers. Okay. Yeah, I mean this this game, or this map being what it is. I mean it's a it is a fairly flat map. I mean, kind of expect you're gonna have rovers, tanks, hovercraft sometimes if gold is playing. Steel blue, however, is going to be much more aggressive. They started the factory a little bit later, but getting those darts out immediately. Ultra Godzilla, on the other hand, starting out with Masons, being very confident, and then get the scorcher up in time for anything that might come in. And they are right; they are definitely gonna have the scorcher up in time. The darts will not be able to get in there before the Scorcher has been built. I say that! I say that Ultra Godzilla's run out of any resources to actually build with. They are getting a bit slowed down by themselves. Steel Blue, on the other hand, having focused primarily on darts, isn't going to be too concerned. I mean, the darts are primarily for scouting purposes and not for killing things purposes, but I don't know if Steel Blue realizes this. They are going to be losing this dart here, and they didn't really get a lot of information. I mean, they, they kind of know where Ultra Godzilla is. They know Ultra Godzilla's gone for Ropers. They, so they know Mirror Match. Let's just play it as it is. And already getting a Ripper up. Wow, Steel Blue does not want to play the Raider game. They want to get those Ripers up. They want to be able to just riot out their opponent immediately. And Ultra Godzilla, on the other hand, going full on Raider. All the Scorches in the world with some darts for support. Steel Blue apparently a lot less confident in their micro, which kind of makes sense if they're and considering Ultra Godzilla is. I think Singularity rank, like, highest rank here. So, yeah. Oof. <laughs> FFC in the chat. Cloak's got buff. What happens? Rover versus Rover. And I'm actually kind of surprised. Titan Duel is a map that works reasonably well for Cloak bots, but, eh. Rovers are... Rovers are our factory. They exist. They are very strong. And the Scorcher coming in here is going to have a field day because there's no defenses in the back line. At all. Scorch can just come in here and start ripping everything to shreds. Goes the there goes the Mason. That is the big one. That Mason gone is... That's it. Defense are going to come in as well. Another Mason going to try to avenge its fallen comrade? I don't really understand what the point is here. But yeah, the Mason's not able to defend. They do not have any weapons of their own. And that means there is pretty much nothing stopping the Mason from dying. And down it goes. That's two Masons down along with another dart. That's Scorcher. This is possibly the game-winning Scorcher. Ultra Godzilla, what is threatening them? Nothing. The command, the Ripper is coming back. It's trying to get back in here, but it's not going to be fast enough as the Scorcher should be able to take out this factory. It's, uh, five seconds, four seconds, three seconds. Oh, this is it. No, the factory's going to go down. The Scorcher will go down with the factory explosion, but that is still it. That Scorcher goes in there. Ultra Godzilla with the manor GG after that Scorcher kill. I mean, to be fair... The game is basically over, but Steel Blue not accepting that. No, no, no. They, they're going to keep going. They're building up a caretaker. They want to get another factory up. Should take it to about 20 seconds to do so. But they do have a Ripper. Now, one Ripper isn't really enough. You need two or three for them to be really effective. However, it might... I mean, it's, a, it's an option. And there's the Cloak by Factory! After losing the Rover Factory, why not go for the Cloak Butts? Do we have Knights on hand? I don't know, but it'll be interesting. Still, the right... The, Ripper is doing its job. Gets rid of a couple cloak bots, or a couple, not cloak bots, a couple of the Scorchers coming in here, and Steel Blue as well upgrading the commander, getting that, getting that shot in there. It's doing something. It's getting rid of a Ravager. 
So Steel Blue is at least able to defend their base a bit, but Ultra Godzilla has been expanding this entire time. I mean, they are in a really strong spot right now. So, I like the idea, Ultra Godzilla. I like how you're thinking. I like this way you're approaching things. I just don't know... I just don't know if you realize Steel Blue is still going strong here. Actually, no, they do. They do. They did see the Glucobot Factory coming in. So, Ultra Godzilla completely aware that Steel Blue is setting up. But Steel Blue... They're not really prepared for this. I mean, the Rippers... Ripper versus Ravager, that's... That is, as we can see, a match their Ravager wins very easily. And with that, there is nothing left to defend Steel Blue. They had the Caretaker coming in here, but unfortunately, it's only the Caretaker. The Commander, I mean, kind of forced to go and try to expand as much as they can. And really is the main defense at this point. Steel Blue's Commander is basically it. Now, I'll argue upgrading the Commander might... Well, uh, no, it's not really using all the resources. It's going to be a bit of a problem now, since there's not a lot of energy. But the Factory's up. Cloakbot coming in with some Glaives. Good counter for the Ravagers, although at the same time, what is being on what is on deck here? Scorcher, Ripper, Ravager. That is a nice combo to help get rid of the Glaives. It'll help get rid of the Knights too if they come up. But hey, the Glaive at least is able to do some damage here. Glaive, get in! Kill the thing! At least try. Nope. What I mean, it was doing fine until it decided to run in front of the barrel. <laughs> so, the Ravager wasn't even shooting at it. It's like no, I shall take the bullet for the... Or the shell, rather, for the mechs. I shall save you, mechs. I mean, to be fair, it did keep the mechs alive a small amount longer, which I guess that's like four or six metal. So, for the cost of a glaive. Anyway, I think, yeah. I think, I think it's time for the towel. It is indeed towel time. As we shall throw it in, Steel Blue, and they're trying. They got the Glaives. They have at least something to work with. And there's, I mean, there's not a huge amount of defense. There's some Lotuses here and there, but I wouldn't say it's nothing that half a dozen Glaives can't handle. The question just becomes, are those Glaives going to be able to do their job well? Is Or more importantly, is there going to be enough power? Because that's the key thing, is right now, Steel Blue needs a lot more energy if they want to be able to use the Reclaim as effectively as they need to. Now, Steel Blue did go for some Nanolays. So what's their commander at? 17? 15? 14. Alright, it's not bad. 14 build power will give them quite a bit for the Clopot Factory. And the Clopot Factory is going at 20 metal per second. But Ultra Godzilla, they have twice that much in production. Going for a fusion plant on top of that to have perfect power. Well, basically to secure their power for the rest of the game. And get a nice bit of overdrive. But, hey, they're Steel Blue. Going for it. They're running to the commander first. That is going to be... I think it's going to be game. They're going to try. The Glaives will definitely attack the commander. They will not survive, though. They, The commander got the machine gun. They, they're perfect. They're fine. That's that's it. If there was no towel before, there is towel now. Oof. I mean, there's one glaive trying to go around and doing what it can, but it's not going to have a chance. There is... Yeah, there's nothing left. I mean, we have, squir we have skirmishes coming in here with the Ronin. And it's an attempt, but it's not going to be enough. And at the same time, we have the possibility of a Locust Swarm. The possibility of a lot of Swarms. Harpy Swarm, Locust Swarm, Gnat Swarm. I think Blast Swarm would be a little bit too cheeky. Although I think Ultra Godzilla, their commander is kind of being ignored here. I I think the... Okay, the Ronin are doing a fine job. Now, granted, it's a Recon Commander. It can jump away any time, which it is, in fact, doing right now. While at the same time, Fencer's coming in to try to... Put Steel Blue in a similar position. I gotta be honest, I'm kind of impressed by how much Steel Blue is managing to hold on, considering that, like, they're holding on and actually managing to get some ground back. Considering that they've kind of got nothing. I mean, they have 20 metal per second compared to 50, with one factory that, I mean, it is being assisted quite well, but there's not a whole lot of power to actually support that. I'm not sure I totally agree with using the commander, or upgrading the commander as much as they are, but honestly, that's been keeping them in the game, so Steel Blue... It's not the worst idea, but it just feels like it is delaying the inevitable. <laughs> okay, time for an... How am I being too pessimistic? Like, I mean, okay, to be honest, Steel Blue is... They are, they are kind of, you know, waiting and... Oh, setting up a crow! Wow, okay, that is cheesy. Sheesh. 
I mean, Ultra Godzilla is playing with their food. I, I, it's just, I got, like, you gotta really be clear here. Steel Blue is doing a great job of holding on, and really, Ultra Godzilla is providing a bit of an opening for Steel Blue, but look at the change in territory. I mean, I'm sure you're being sarcastic there, Dying Friend, because really, Ultra Godzilla, they're, they have this game and they know it, they're just picking the flashiest way to win. That's essentially how this is playing out. And the question is whether or not Steel Blue will actually manage to either whether they'll resign before that happens or whether they'll manage to take advantage of the fact that Ultra Godzilla is playing things a little fast and loose just because of cockiness, essentially. Now, again, considering the economic disparity, I don't think Ultra Godzilla is being cocky. I mean, there's a lot of metal extractors that have been wiped out. There's rebuilding going on, which is great, but the reclaim has basically been exhausted. I mean, Steel Blue is doing what they can to grab what they can, but even then, there's only so much that can be done. And Ultra Godzilla is working, it's getting some damage done to them, but not much. I do like the use of the spotter here. <laughs> Very nice work here. Spotter conjures. That is cool. That way you don't have to worry about the radar dots, you just, you just come in there. Unfortunately, Steel Blue, is that, is that energy? Uh oh no, they got they have plenty of energy now. I don't know why it was looking like the cloak the conjurers were losing their cloak. That might have been an artifact of me changing the view. So I mean Ultra Godzilla is kind of open a little bit, but like behind these defenses are more defenses and then more defenses. I mean before it was more naked and it could have been a break, but now Ultra Godzilla's just been reinforcing defenses and they have that crow. That crow is ready. It's it's going. It is crow time. And I think that is pretty much going to decide the game. All right, Crow. It's up to you. And I don't know, Steel Blue might even not stay in the game after seeing that Crow. They have the resources to start building up a bunch of anti-air if they wanted to. And I mean, it's not like the, the Ronin are a bad idea, but yeah, there's the Crow coming in here. And not a whole lot to be said. It's basically just having a field day. And there it goes, taking all the glaives. There's the bombs dropping onto the... Oh, not on the factory, though, but in front of it. Ah, okay, there's on the factory. And the factory's down, and I think Steel Blue... I mean, they're they're being valiant. They're trying, but that crow is really the vanguard. Everything else coming on top of that. Steel Blue realizes that, throws in the towel, and there it is. The game goes to Ultra Godzilla. They move on to the grand finals, and Steel Blue goes to the lower bracket finals. As, well, that's what happens. And at the same time, Dyth did beat Daniel Brest in the lower bracket. Matthew Whiteman still fighting Orange Sky. I don't know how that match is going specifically right now. Looks like it is going to be... Is it still going? Oh yeah, it's still going. Okay. Yeah, how long is that going to take? I should probably switch off to that. It's gonna go, and let's just watch that. So, 